Well, for most people, escape from California doesn't seem like an especially wonderful thing to do because if like the rest of you, you are like I am a big Hotel California fan, California is like paradise. It's like heaven. It's like escaping from everything else to go there. And while Indiana wanted me, I did not want Indiana. So I was in Los Angeles for the better part of a year. And I worked my way up in the Brentano's West Coast Warehouse. I was now the West Coast Warehouse Manager for Brentano's Bookstore. And my next move would have been an assistant manager in one of the LA Basin stores. My idea of hell. I really did not adapt well to California. I'm from the Easter Woodlands, so that light green color of springtime, I just love. You know, the, the summertime, thunder showers and lightning, just so exciting. The, the clear air of the fall. And you don't get seasons in California. You have unrelenting sun and those grotesque tropical colors everywhere all the time. It just, it's a nightmare. People are friendly as shit. I mean, I hung out with a bunch of surfer, surfers, had a great time for a long time, but it's all so superficial. My best friend in LA was a, a transplanted New York Jew from the Upper East Side. I mean, that's how I had a friend there at all. That and the ostentatious rich who can spend multi-million dollars for a house is on one of the cliffs of, say, Pacific Palisades. My aunt lived in Pacific Palisades. And when I got there in 1974, the 100 and 200 block of Pacific Palisades were gone. When I visited her again in, you know, in, in the millennium, two more blocks were gone. So it's like, who cares? We got millions of dollars. And they do things like put a dozen can canning Santa Clauses in their yard in a huge place in Beverly Hills. I mean, it was tasteless, it was horrendous. And it was like the thought of spending another few years as an assistant manager of one of the California stores was just the last thing I could possibly want to do. I just was not going to be a corporate suit. That was just not my thing. Well, I got an acceptance at graduate school, so that was my parachute way out. A friend of mine, um, Katina, who had traveled part of the way out to California with me in the first place, was in San Francisco, had come down to LA, and we we're going to travel back to Indiana together. Now, I was 21, Katina was 18, so it wasn't exactly robbing the cradle except that I'd known her since she was 16, so it kind of felt like it was. Well, we got a ride from the UCLA ride board with a, some couple taking a VW you know, camper to Florida, and we thought we'd, we'd go with them. It seemed like a good deal. Well, we thought we'd get them to take a detour from Louisiana up to Indiana. Well, if you actually looked at a map, it would have been a 10-hour drive either way. There was no way they were going to do that, but that was unbeknownst to us idiot children, 20 somethings. Well, I was anyway. Well, you have to go through deserts when you leave California on the Southern route. You go through the Mojave, the Sonoran, the Chihuahuan puts you all the way through West Texas where if I had to live in West Texas for very long, I probably would kill somebody. It was so hot. And this is before every car has air conditioning. And this is a VW camper made in Germany there is no AC in this thing. You open the windows and it's hot. And the girls won't let the guys take their shirts off until finally we get to, you know, halfway through Arizona and the girls have, are in bras and panties with rivulets of sweat running down them. And it's just, it's insane. That and the nightmare of, of just at dusk and seeing tumbleweeds blowing across the road. It's like in a horror, film, a horror movie. And, and then, then when you have to keep the windows closed, as you're in a sandstorm and it just like you're in a, you're, you're buried in sand outside the windows. It's crazy. It just, it's, it's, it's just unbearable. We finally get through three States full of the biggest deserts in the Southwest in the U S we're between Conroe and Beaumont and it's nighttime. We're exhausted. We desperately need fuel and food and God damn it. Some coffee. It takes us about a half an hour off the road before we find this little diner. And we go in this place, find a booth. I mean, thank God we're going to get something. Except we probably smell to high heaven. We're probably a little bit profane in our language. And our accents certainly are East Texas accents. 15 minutes goes by. 
and we don't even have menus, gets to be a half hour and it becomes obvious we're not going to get menus and we best get out of there quickly. We practically fall over each other to get back to the van, slam the door, drive nonstop to Louisiana. Except that this is Bayou country. And even though we're parking this big open parking lot, the mosquitoes are so thick, you can almost not see through them. I went to my screaming fights with Katina at that point about, please do not scratch yourself. You scratch your skin off by dawn. We finally, the next day, get to Baton Rouge. And of course, then our hosts drop us off in Baton Rouge. And we're going to have to hitchhike through Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And my father was in civil rights in the Deep South, and I just, this was a nightmare to me. I just couldn't. Luckily, we get picked up by this little black truck driver. Why are his shit tiny? And he's got a, a bunk in the back. He's friendly as hell. He's sharing his marijuana with us. So this is fine. This is part of the fun. And he drives all the way to Nashville. It's such a riot. He's hearing the white truckers on their CBs going, saw one of them little black boys heading up. He's probably stoned. And the kid looks at me, the guy looks at me with this big shit eating grin on his face. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. We get to Nashville, make it the rest with Southern Indiana. Katina and I did not talk to each other for the rest of that summer. But we stayed friends. I visited her when I was in graduate school, when I was a young professor. We fell apart a little bit when we both got married and had families. Now that we're both divorced, we're talking again on the phone. I'm still feeling like this is a little bit like robbing the cradle, except it's kind of not robbing the cradle when someone is 64 to your 67. Who knows what the future may hold? We got out of California together.